Hi, my name is Pastor Tina Russell, and I am so excited to release the second part of our testimony and how God repositioned us to restore us. You know, we serve a mighty God, and I know that 2014 is going to be your year. It's going to be a year where you too will see God reposition you so He can restore you and your family. Amen. And through this next segment, I hope that you get encouraged. I hope that you get in faith. I hope that you believe that we serve a God that will will pull you through out of impossible situations because if he did it for us he will do it for you amen and we want to hear from you i praise god for those that have contacted me but i want to continuously hear your testimony so that it also encourages me in my faith to believe more for what god has in store in 2014. so i hope that you are blessed and yes please share the videos with those that may be going through what you will hear in this next segment Pastor Scott Russell, and this is a wind beneath my wings, Pastor Tina Russell, and we're from Recovered and Restored Ministries. And we're happy to talk to you today a little bit more about our testimony. In our last video, we shared with you about how God is repositioning us to restore us. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how he transitioned us from Grand Rapids, Michigan, down here to Tampa, Florida. And today we just want to share a little bit more about our testimony. Yes, I'm so excited to give just more details because we strongly believe that when you hear, you know, testimonies from others and how good God is, how faithful He is to perform His Word in our life, that it helps build faith in others. And that's exactly why we want to be transparent as much as possible and simply share. Um, you know, to just give you a little bit more details about how God repositioned us to restore us to begin that restoration process, praise God. You know, um, it, it really begins, you know, back in uh, 2007 when he, you know, released to me that there was going to be a shift. And, you know, it didn't look like there was going to be a shift, but um, very quickly, if uh, you recall, in 2008, you know, the economy began to really fall. You know, the housing went down, people were losing their jobs, and, you know, things just weren't, you know, um, doing too well for anybody, pretty pretty much. And, you know, we, we at that time, you know, had just had our fifth child, you know, and, um, but there was things that were happening to us. We were affected, yeah. you know. But we were in a situation where, you know, it didn't look like we would be affected. We were mm -hmm. very, uh, well, the business was doing great. We owned a business. Uh, we were very involved in our local church, uh, yes. leaders in the church. We tithed, we gave offerings. Yes. And uh, in the natural, things seemed great. We did have a lot of debt, but we also had a lot of income mm -hmm. in order to pay that debt. Uh, with no problem our credit was great and yeah. so uh in in the way it looked in the natural things were going awesome i couldn't be more happy with the the direction of the business and our involvement with the church um, but god had a different plan in mind yeah so as the economy the world was being shaken you know we were being shaken as well and you know it's like you don't really realize that, you know, sometimes God does use the world system and our, you know, current cir circumstances in order to shake us loose from things that really we're in captivity to. And, you know, uh, you know, especially the people of God, you know, I mean, people that, you know, you know who, who you are. I'm talking to you right now. You know, you've sown seeds into the kingdom of God. You know, you work hard in your local church or ministry. And yet, you know, you went through financial hardship or maybe you are right now. Maybe you're believing God, you know, because you're facing, you know, losing a home or a truck or a car or whatever the situation is. But I want you to know that God wants to restore everything to you. You. So even if you're in that situation, it's not impossible for God to pull you out because That's he pulled right. us out. That's right. And what we didn't realize is we were really just simply receiving the kingdom, which he says that we're going to receive on this earth, well, you know. And so, you know, in that position that we were in, you know, it was a binding position. I mean, if you, I mean, we felt like our, our hands were tied and they were, yes. you know, they were tied. And in December of 2007, a few days before Christmas, what happened? Well, as I said, we had a business and part of the business was snow plowing. We had a lot of trucks mm -hmm. and uh, even though things seemed to be going well, we were kind of making payments a little late, yes. 30 days, 32 days, I think is when 
Uh, the bank came yeah. when we were 32 days late and he repossessed my snowplow truck. Mm. Which we just were completely surprised. We never thought wow. they would act just because of a 32 day late payment with all the other payments being read on time. And good credit. With good credit. And we're God's people. Absolutely. Hello. <laughs> and we're leaders in the church. Like, but, you know, I mean, they. But at that time, the bank just didn't seem to have a care anything about mm -hmm. our circumstance. We went to go meet with the bank and I explained to him, look, I don't understand. You know why you would take my means to produce this is a snowplow truck yeah. it produces monies yeah. all right in order for me to make the payments i agree i'm 32 days late but i i, I wouldn't i can't understand <laughs> why you're taking our, my truck my means to to in order to pay you away from me and the only thing they really cared about was pointing out the letter of the contract stating that they are within the law because it went past 30 days come on <laughs> yeah and so here we are, we're, we're here at the bank, and you know, we walked away just being disheartened, you know, just down, of course, and shame, you yeah. know? Yeah. We felt ashamed because we're like, wow, we're, you know, we're people that we always made sure that we made our payments on yeah. time. We're good people, you know, business-wise, and, you know, taking care of things that God entrusted us to, and we were believing God, you know, for expansion and increase and all of that, and, and we gave it, but we weren't too wise, and and really, you know, paying attention to all the debt that we were also carrying. And, and I strongly believe, you know, if you listen to our last testimony, that that, that also was a mm -hmm. part of what, you know, had led well, to... Well, Tina, we were in the same position I think the banks put a lot of people yes. in. Yes. Is you would apply for a loan and the bank would check into your circumstances and then they would grant a loan if they felt like you were strong enough to mm -hmm. carry yeah. it. Yeah. And I think that's the position a lot of people got yes. into because the banks uh, were the one doing the loans. The banks were the ones saying, yes, yes, you're approved. And that gave a sense of confidence that we really shouldn't have relied upon. But what was so awesome is, is that we are also were relying upon another system. Mm -hmm. That's on. God's system. That's right. You know, we were giving and we always give. We believe in tithing and we believe in giving offerings, you know, to the kingdom of God. I don't, I, I, I believe that every seed that you sow into the kingdom of God, that, you know what, it's going to come back to you 30, 60, and 100 fold, you know. But man, it didn't look like our seeds were, you know, flourishing at that time. But the reality is, is God was removing us from the world system and, and, and into repositioning us surely you know in the earth operating under right. his kingdom and understanding that it was only by faith through grace that we're saved anyway that we're delivered out of these financial burdens that we may put ourselves in or you know by falling victim to you know through the housing or through the banking industry you know that so many people have and we you know even you know just carried a lot of shame with that but that's why we're like you know what we don't want to carry the shame we made a decision right. years ago that man we can't wait till we testify of the goodness of God and when we testify we're gonna we're gonna bring glory to his name and that it would encourage you that are that are watching right now to know that our God is able to do what he says he can do and even though you know you may be under you know in that situation and carrying those you know burdens that God never wanted you to carry I'm telling you he has the power to deliver you supernaturally but you got to get in faith to believe that God can do what he says he will do. That's right. You know, you know and we were in a situation where God began to work that transition. God began mm -hmm. to uh, reposition us. And, you know, it didn't feel too good, did it, Pastor? No, it didn't feel good at all. It, it felt very fearful, you know, especially being a wife and a mom and you, you just had your fifth child. You know, talk about insecurity. Talk about messing with your security, you know, of your house and security of, you know, how are we going to make it, you know. But you know what? We didn't stop. We didn't sit in that. We didn't allow the devil to back us up in the corner and say, oh, you know, all hope is lost. No, because the hope of, of Christ that is in us, you know, you can't lose hope when you got Christ. You just can't. It's impossible. I believe that you can look at circumstances and get caught up in those circumstances and get in fear. But that hope is always in you because he's in you. And we began to prophesy. We began to just say, you know what, God, we are the king's 
kids. You know what? We may have made a mistake, but God, you know what? We also know that we are also victims, you know, of, of systems that were in place in this world. And, and Lord, we're asking for you to deliver us. Exactly. And that's, you know? what, that's key what you're saying right there. Because at any point, we could have said no yes. to this repositioning. We could have said no yes, to this pain and just... You know what? I'm going to figure this out. I'm yes. going to I'm going to sell other accounts in this area. Yes. I'm going to do any everything mm -hmm. and anything I can yes. to uh, make sure that the business grows in order to bring the income in that we needed. Yes. But at the same time, as you said, we took a time out and and we mm -hmm. listened to the Lord. We hearkened to the Lord because yes. we said, "Look, you know what?" We are in love with Jesus Christ and everything we've ever done, we put it before the Lord. Always. And we said, Lord, if this isn't your will, then don't let it happen. Don't let this business go in, in this direction. Don't let yes. us even have a business if it's not your will. We only want your will. So we knew that when this began, these circumstances began to happen, that there's more involved in j than just being, um, you know, a victim of the of the world systems. Yes. We began to look to the Lord and pray and ask His direction, ask His discernment, and ask His instructions of which way to go. And because of our prayers, I strongly believe the turbulence got more and more through the years. It was really about a five-year span that we went through serious turbulent times in seeing, you know, just enough to get by. Come on, somebody. You know, I know I'm talking to somebody right now, man. We live in just enough to get by. And I thought, Lord, you know what? I did that about 15 years ago when I first got saved. You know, I thought I was at a new level. What's going on? But you know what? God was so faithful in showing us that, you know what? He can give you an eagle's eye view into your situation. And he can say to you, you know what? You may not have more than enough right now, but you know what? I'm giving you enough. I'm giving you that manna in the darkness. Come on. I am the one that's covering you. I'm the one that's shading you. You just keep your focus on me. You keep your mind set upon thee. And I'm going to deliver you because he is our deliverer. You know, and and as we continue to believe God through the years, you know, it was just little by little that he just led us and guided us, you know, through his Holy Spirit. And I praise God for that. You know, I praise God that we can have the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. And just like, you know, the Israelites got delivered, you know, and they they rose up Moses or God rose up Moses to deliver the Israelites. You know what? I believe that Jesus Christ right here right now is coming to people in their living rooms and over the Facebook and over via you know YouTube and saying you know what I've got your back because if he had our back he's got your back That's right. all you gotta do is just sit at his feet and say Lord lead me show me the way out of this crisis and he will but know this it's gonna get turbulent and it's gonna look a little bit right. violent but the Bible says that, you know what? The kingdom of God mm -hmm. suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. We have to take a hold of the things of God and hold on to the promises of God. And even though, you know, we get, you know, faced with those times where, you know, God is releasing us, we have to recognize the release, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it was hard for us to recognize the release, you know? That God was repositioning us, you know, and to just simply trust Him through that process. Right. You know? Well, it could have been, and you feel tempted to stay in, well, feel sorry for me. How could this happen for yes. me? And get Come stuck, on. get Come paralyzed, on. and just stay right Come there in fear. <laughs> you know, that was a temptation. Yes. But we also knew that we couldn't do that. No. That in order to go forward, we had to act. We had to do more than just pray. We had to do Come more on. than just seek the Lord. Do We had to do more than just read the Word. There's also a part that we have to do as far as getting up and yes. begin to Come walk. On. Even if they're little baby steps through just speaking and confessing yes. to each other. I remember yes. many times in the middle of being feared, I would just start to release out the opposite of what I was feeling <laughs> inside. I'd speak oh, it to my wow. wife. I would speak it into the and air, into the it. atmosphere. Yeah. Just so I could, even if I was by myself in the car, I'd speak it out loud because I needed to hear some truth. I needed yeah. to hear what God was saying in order to cut off the other voices that were coming against me, Come telling on. me that we're in trouble. I had to begin to release the Word of God. I had to put action Yes. to what God was telling us. Yes. And in that in that course of the time, you know, it was actually last year, uh, I believe it was last year, November, that we found word that after five years of hoping and praying 
that our home would be saved per se, mm -hmm. we found out that no, it's not. Mm -hmm. That they are going to foreclose on us. On and you know, though, it was a we, five year process five that year. we yeah. worked with the banks uh, to do what two different, we worked through two different modifications. And then after five years of working with the bank, they let us know. And this all started, yeah. to be clear, it all started back in 2008 when we missed two payments because of the economy yeah. and because people losing their jobs and you know then that affected us and our rental properties and mm -hmm. you know and other, uh, other various businesses that we had going on so we were robbing Peter to pay Paul per se mm -hmm. and you know something's gonna give and you know but for five years God supernaturally suspended us and caused us you know to stay in that home but then again he used it though for at the right time at the right place right here right now to be repositioned to Florida mm -hmm. now how great is that you know I mean we could have like you said just stopped and you know I mean I mean quite honestly let's get real do you know how many marriages end because of this right. kind of situation that we went through but God you know, mm -hmm. preserved our marriage, and mm -hmm. we and we we strengthened one another in the Lord. You know, and and we are by no means saying we handled it perfect, <laughs> but I can tell you this: we got back up and we kept Christ as the center. That's right. And when you come in unity with Christ first, individually, even as couples, you know, and then you come together in unity, you know, a, as a couple, and then you come in unity with the plan of God. Mm -hmm. He says in Psalm 133 that you know what where there's unity he commands the blessing Woo! he Amen. commands the blessing and that's, that's right. why we believe that you know it's all of those things working together what brought us here in our new home here in Florida and I just praise God for that because I know that in 2014 there are people that are being repositioned to be restored yes. by our king but you have to come into that place with him you got to come into right. that place and come up out of the the all of the stuff that people have placed upon you all the labels all the limits and you know just circumstances the financial pressure maybe it's an unhealthy relationship I don't know what your situation is but I know this I know that God wants to deliver you into his best in 2014. And that's why we want to share with you that if God did it for us, he's going to do it for you. And he's going to cause you to be shaken, you know, from all of the things of the world. That's okay. Let it fall off. That's right. Amen. Because right. we want to receive the things of God. We want to receive the kingdom of God because that kingdom, it can't be shaken. And if we build our lives upon the word of God, and if we choose to stand and resist the enemy and submit to God, God. the devil has to flee right. and God blesses you know it's when we try to you know finagle and we try to you know control and manipulate situations that we get ourselves in well, situations but right. when we trust God and we say God not your way but but or not my way but your way well, then we see his way come to pass right. so when I say to you that God wants to restore you I'm telling you 2014 is the year that the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, the swarming locusts, they all got to flee because God is about to be fruitful and multiply in your life like never before. The love, the joy, the peace. I'm not talking just financial stuff. I'm talking, you know what, peace. I don't know about you, but the peace of mind, man, I, I need the peace of mind because right. I know that there's other storms in my life, you know, but without that peace, you know, wow, you, you can lose your mind. And there's so many people that are. God's That's good right. people, you know, are losing their mind. They shouldn't be losing their mind. You know, they shouldn't be in situations like that anymore when God says, you know what, it's time. It's time for you to be released into all that I have promised you. All those things that, you know, I have spoke to you in the secret place are about to come to light. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we just thank you for watching. Have a blessed week.